Apple beat expectations in their earnings call yesterday, reporting $10.7 billion in profit, profit, not revenue, for the quarter uh, on revenue of nearly $50 billion, which is a 33% increase over the same quarter last year. Of course, Wall Street was disappointed. Shara Tipkin is a senior writer for CNET and joins us now. Welcome to you, Shara. Hey, thanks for having me. Thank you so much for being here. Now, Apple beat expectations and reported truckloads and truckloads of money going into Cupertino. Why did their stock drop something like 8% after the call? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, Apple is different. Every company, every investor looks at them differently from anybody else in the tech world. So something that would be amazing for any other company is disappointing for Apple. The biggest concern this time around was iPhone sales. So they sold, you know, 47.5 million of them, but it wasn't, it was about 2 million short of what analysts had expected. Shara, China is definitely becoming a big part of Apple's revenue stream. And I know they grew iPhone sales there again and will probably continue to do so. But do you think that investors are concerned about the economy in China, which has been kind of shaky lately, or they're just thinking it's peak iPhone in China at this point? Oh, definitely. I mean, people are for sure concerned about China. It has, uh, in the last quarter, it became Apple's biggest iPhone market. Tim Cook says they still see it becoming Apple's biggest market overall. But even he said that there could be some speed bumps in the short term because of what's happening there with the stock market and the general economy. He said that the fears are probably overstated, I think is the phrase he used. But, you know, we just have to see what happens there. You know, if there's a major slowdown in the economy, that means people aren't going to have, you know, $800 to spend on a new iPhone. So it's definitely a big concern for the company. You know, to a certain extent, I understand the, uh, the disappointment. I mean, I, I, sarcasm aside, <laughs> uh, Apple has the highest valuation of any company ever, I think, or at least they did yeah, before yeah. yesterday. They've made, yeah, they've made a bigger profit than any company ever. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and, you know, to, to have a valuation that high that's driven by, you know, excitement or interest or whatever you want to call it by the, uh, by the stock market, basically. And that has to be earned quarter after quarter. And in order to earn that, you have to really be a high-performing company. And a lot of the, and of course, the iPhone is the big driver of revenue and profit for the company. Huge percentage of, of their money comes in from the iPhone. And yet the iPhone was, um, you know, they got a big bolt, jolt from the big iPhones they came out with. Uh, for the first time ever, Apple had a big big iPhone. They also got a big jolt from a recent deal that they've been trying to, to, to land with China Mobile for a couple of years. And so, so for a while, they've been on China Mobile. And that's unlikely to be the new normal. On the other hand, uh, they are building Apple stores in China as fast as they possibly can and spreading across, across the country. Unless the Chinese economy craters or something, they're going, going to keep making more people uh, middle class and essentially bringing them into the, uh, uh, the realm of people who can afford an iPhone. So what do you personally think, Shara, about Apple's prospects in China over the next year, over the next couple of years? Are you optimistic? Yeah, I mean, I think so. I actually just got back from Vietnam, which, you know, it's the population there is not as big as China, but it is kind of developing like China was, you know, maybe 10 years ago. And everybody in Vietnam is just crazy about the iPhone. You can't even walk, you know, go down a single block without seeing a store that is advertising the iPhone and other Apple products. And I think that Apple just has this huge brand behind them. You know, unless they completely just come out with crappy phones over the next couple of years, which I doubt is the case, I, you know, I think they're going to keep growing in China. There's, as you mentioned, the the middle class is growing there. And what people are wanting to put their money into is new phones. And they really care about that Apple brand. So, Shara, let's, um, let's talk about some of their other products, even though the iPhone is like 70% of the company's revenue, if not more <laughs> yeah. at this point. Um, <laughs> you know, everybody wanted to know that this is the first time that Apple will be reporting a full quarter and will have Apple Watch sales under its belt. Tim Cook had previously said last year, we're not going to share those actual sales figures because we don't want our competitors to know. And of course, people are, 
extrapolating that to iPhone sales or uh, yeah. I'm sorry, Apple watch <laughs> sales are bad. Um, so what did we find out if anything, because they lumped those sales into the other products category? Yeah. Yeah. This was really tricky. And it was funny. I was watching Twitter during the call and there were all these analysts that were kind of debating amongst each other what the numbers were. Uh, one analyst, Gene Munster from Piper Jaffray, he came out with a note right after the release came out saying, oh, clearly the numbers indicate that they sold 1.2 million Apple Watches. During the call, um, Tim Cook and the CFO tried to talk about how all of the growth, sequential growth in the other products category, which was uh, just shy of a billion dollars, they said all of that came from Apple Watch. So people are trying to draw conclusions about what that means. Uh, after the call, Piper Jaffrey revised it and said, oh, we think they sold 2.5 million. Some of the other forecasts were around the same. But any way you look at it, it was still not as many Apple Watches as people had expected. I think most analysts were around 4 million or something like that. And while we don't actually know the precise number, generally Wall Street analysts are saying it wasn't as much as we had thought. We've kind of seen them across the board cut their expectations for what Apple's going to sell for the Apple Watch in the next couple quarters. But Tim Cook, you know, he's always optim optimistic. He said that they expect this to be the top gift for the holiday season. So we're just going to have to see if people are buying this as a stocking stuffer. Uh, I think we're past the point of really giving smartphones as gifts because everybody has one. So, you know, if you're trying to get a gift for somebody, a tech product, and you don't really know what to get them, maybe you're going to buy an Apple Watch, maybe you'll buy a Fitbit, one of these other wearables. So that's really what Apple's counting on. One thing I'm not buying is Tim Cook's claim during the call that the Apple Watch sales have met or exceeded their Apple's expectations. Yeah, I mean, uh, we have no idea what that is. Yeah, you know, that, I mean, they could have been like, oh, I think we're going to sell 50 of these things. Great. You know, <laughs> like yeah. there's no, you know, I, I hate when companies give give comparisons like that because all you hear is, oh, they meet, they beat expectations, but they don't give a number. And they say it's because they don't want to give competitors an unfair advantage. But what about the iPad or the iPhone? Like, why were they not worried about giving rivals an advantage with those products? I was looking back at the iPad last night when that first came out, and they had four press releases in the first three months giving updates on how many of those they'd sold. And, you know, right, they, the iPad changed that market, and we've seen a million different tablets come out since then. I don't know how giving numbers can really give someone else a competitive advantage. I'm shocked, Shara. Shocked that you would <laughs> suggest that Apple would spin uh, their sales numbers here. Now, what about, you, you mentioned the iPad. How is the iPad doing? Is it still sliding oh, into... Yeah, it's, yeah, it's still doing so bad. I, I don't think anybody expected it to recover this quarter. The last iPads they introduced were in October. So we're almost getting up to be those being a year old. The new ones weren't really a change from the last ones anyway. So what we're really looking for now is the sort of iPad Pro, which could let you do a lot more business things with it, bigger screen, you know, kind of just hopes that something like that could help get this going again. But the fact is, if you have an iPhone 6 Plus, that is a big screen. You know, getting an yeah. iPad mini is not really something that you need. So it's just, you know, the market is kind of going through growing pains. I don't think it's going to die completely, but it's definitely not a booming place for Apple right now. Yeah, I would definitely agree with that because that that refresh cycle of an iPad or a tablet in general is just not the same as, say, the iPhone, for example. Mm -hmm. um, ne neither is that for the PC. People keep their PCs for so long. And that brings me to the last question here about um, their last product line, and that's the Mac. The PC industry has actually really been struggling as a whole for the past several quarters. And it looks like Apple, you know, did it again. They grew Mac sales, I think, by mm -hmm. 8%. Um, yeah. I mean, is that, hmm? Oh, sorry. Yeah, I was just going to say, it, I mean, it's really kind of remarkable what they've been able to do with the Mac product line. For a long time, it was kind of just the other products almost. People weren't really excited about Macs. Everybody's talking about iPad, iPad iPhone, all of these other products, but... And there was the worry that people weren't going to buy computers anymore, that everybody's going to buy tablets. And you can just look at Apple's results and see that that's not the case. Like their Mac line has really been doing well over the past couple quarters, especially when you compare it to the rest of the market. They just came out with the new MacBook um, 
earlier this spring that's super thin, super light, has a gold color. And I've seen a lot of those in the wild already. So I think that what they're doing is what people are looking for in a computer. I'm actually using that one right now for this show, which was a struggle <laughs> because it only has one port and I've got two USB <laughs> devices here. So pull in the hub. Woohoo. First world problem. 